And we're back. Once it installs the base system, it's going to want you to set up some users and passwords. Uh, the first user that you set up is going to be the what's called the uh, super user. Um, in Ubuntu, uh, you, you don't have a root account by default. You can enable one. Uh, but at any rate, the super user is the administrative user, uh, the first user you create for the system, and has all administrative rights. So enter the name. I'm going to enter that, but your name would be fine. Uh, and of course, to, to navigate, you could either press enter directly here, or you can press tab so that continue is highlighted, and then press enter. Not a bad idea to do that, just so you're sure of where you are. Uh, then it's going to ask for a username for the account. It'll default to the first name of the user uh, that you entered in the previous step. You can change it at this point if you need to. And of course then it's going to ask for passwords for this user. And it asks you to re-enter the password to verify it. And of course I suggest that uh, if, you, if you don't choose something that is familiar to you and you know that you write it down because it can be recovered but it's a little bit tricky. It's going to ask about a proxy. You almost certainly don't need to enter a proxy here, unless of course you do. If you have a proxy server that you know about, um, you can enter that information here, but this is almost always left blank. So I'm going to tab and press continue. It's going to configure a few more things. Now comes your opportunity to select some additional server software, uh, and you might want to think about why you're actually setting up a server to begin with. It's unlikely that you would need a DNS server in a home network environment, uh, but if you want to learn how to inst if you do need one, or if you want to learn how to install um, domain name services on a, a Ubuntu server, uh, you can certainly check that package. Uh, LAMP server is the Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. That's a very popular option. Uh, mail server, uh, you can install that. OpenSSH will allow you to do secure file transfers. Uh, and terminal access to the server installation. Uh, the Postgres SQL database is an alternative to MySQL. Some applications might require that. Uh, you can install a Unix print server. Last choice you have is a Samba file server. Uh, Samba file server is a set of processes that will allow you to share files stored on a Unix uh, Linux server uh, with Windows systems. Now, uh, you need to be careful if you want to install some of these packages, how you do this. Note that you can arrow up and down like this, and you press the space bar to put an asterisk in the applications that you want to install. I'm going to install LAMP, so I've, I've arrowed down to LAMP. I'm going to press the space bar, and you can see that it puts an asterisk there. I'm also going to install the OpenSSH server. Uh, these two applications, uh, the LAMP server and the Open SSH server, are very popular options, uh, so I'm going to install those by default. Once you have your application selected and you assure that there are asterisks in the um, items that you want to select, press the tab key, uh, and then and only then should you press enter to continue. It's going to select and install that software. Uh, this is going to take a while. The next thing that it asks for is the password for the MySQL root user. Uh, this is an optional at this point. You can enter that later uh, once the server is installed, or you can enter it now. I'll go ahead and enter it now. I think it's probably a good idea. And again, you have to uh, confirm that. And now it's going to continue on with the installation, uh, selecting and installing the additional software. And again, this will take some time depending on what applications you selected. And once the installation is complete, it finishes installing files. It comes to this prompt. It asks you to boot into your new system. Uh, and it wants you to remove the installation media CD-ROM. Well, of course, we installed the uh, application using that ISO file, so there really isn't a CD-ROM to remove. So. I guess the question is, how do you do that? And the answer is, go up here to Settings, and click on Settings, click on CD DVD, and then just point back to your physical CD or DVD drive. Just press that button there. Uh, that effectively ejects the image file that we were using, so you'll be able to reboot. Uh, so do that, and click OK. Uh, and now go ahead and click um, Enter to continue. 
and the system will go ahead and reboot. And if there weren't any problems, uh, and there usually aren't uh, with this uh, uh, kind of a setup, uh, it will eventually come up to a, a Linux prompt. So we'll take a look at the startup so you can see what that looks like. And it's usually a fairly quick process. You can see the various uh, daemons, what they call daemons or processes starting up, uh, MySQL, the Apache web server, and so on. Uh, and now you merely need to log in with your username and password. And now you have a working Ubuntu, Ubuntu server installation. So now just a very quick note about networking here. Uh, we talked earlier about DHCP. Uh, if you'll actually take a look up here at settings and let's go to network uh, and what you're going to find is that by default um, the the virtual machine is set up sharing the host's internet connection uh, that's network address translation uh, without going into a lot of detail it sets up a uh, IP address that is uh, on a private network uh, that doesn't have the same subnet uh, as your host machine and that means that your host machine's browser is not going to be able to hit this uh, uh, hit this uh, uh, server installation. So if at all possible you want to try to get uh, Bridge Network working, uh, to get Bridge Network working you have to be able to get an IP address from whatever your network is. Uh, and if you're working at home on a home network and you have a wireless router or some kind of router set up then uh, you'll almost certainly be able to do that. So uh, try to get physical network, uh, Bridge Network uh, working. Um, but if you, if you absolutely can't, uh, you can use NAT. Um, and uh, if you actually want to hit a browser, uh, use a browser to hit the uh, server installation, then you'll actually need to run a second instance of Ubuntu uh, desktop uh, to use. So uh, try to get Bridge Network working. It's a little bit simpler. Uh, so Now if you do change this, what you're going to find you need to do is that after you change the setting, you need to reboot the virtual machine, of course. All right, moving on. One last thing you should know is how to shut the system down. A couple of things that you can do. First of all, you can suspend uh, a virtual machine. Uh, but I'm going to suggest that it really is better to go ahead and shut it down. Uh, the command to do that is sudo. That's the super user do command. And that's what gives you uh, the right to do administrative tasks since the root account is disabled by default. So sudo, S-U-D-O, shut down now. And you'll need to enter your password since it is an administrative task. And it will eventually shut everything down, kill all the processes, uh, and bring you up to a screen that will allow you to reboot. Um, so the machine is not entirely shut down quite yet. Uh, so to shut it down completely, uh, again, you could either suspend it at this point, and that would be acceptable, uh, or you can go up here to virtual machine, shut down guest and that will actually turn it off. Uh, you may get this message that you don't appear to be running VMware tools package inside this virtual machine. Uh, the VMware tools package uh, does offer a little bit of, of flexibility and being able to trade files back and forth between your host and your guest operating systems. Uh, I'll cover installing the VMware tools in a separate uh, um, uh, episode. Uh, in the meantime, you don't need to install them. The application will work fine if you don't. Uh, so you can click Never Show This uh, dialog again and click OK. Uh, and then the machine is shut down. Uh, so you can actually turn off the machine. And then when you're done with uh, VMware Fusion, uh, you can also turn that off. Uh, and of course, when you're ready to start it up again, um, you simply uh, highlight the virtual machine that you want to run and click Run. Uh, and note that if you have enough memory, you can run multiple virtual machines at the same time. So you can run a copy of Ubuntu Desktop and Ubuntu Server at the same time. Uh, there's some interesting things you can do when you do that, uh, but keep in mind that you need a fair amount of memory. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and we'll show you a little bit more of what you can do with uh, Ubuntu Server uh, in some later episodes. Thanks for watching.